and thank you for joining us. I'm Gabby Antonacci with the Illinois State Museum and we're here to talk about a very important piece of Illinois history, the Underground Railroad. We'll be talking about this piece of art with curators Erica Holst and Doug Steepleton. They're here today with us. Hi Erica and Doug. Hi Gabby, thank you. Hi Gabby, thanks so much. I'm Erica Holst, I'm the Curator of History, and this is my colleague Doug Stapleton. He is the Curator of Art here at the State Museum. I'm going to be going into the background history underpinning this piece of art, and then Doug is going to help us unpack it from an artistic standpoint. So you're looking at a painting that features John and Mary Jones. Now John Jones was born in 1816 in North Carolina. He was the son of a free black woman and a white man. He was apprenticed to a tailor in Memphis, Tennessee and won his freedom from indentured servitude in court. In 1841, he married Mary Jane Richardson of Alton, Illinois, the daughter of free black parents. They moved to Chicago in 1845 with only $3.50 in their pockets. However, John Jones had his tailoring skills and using those, he built himself a successful tailoring business. He invested the money from his tailoring business into real estate and eventually became one of the most wealthy African-American citizens in the United States at that time. So in Chicago, the Joneses were active on the Underground Railroad. They used their home and their office as places of safety for freedom seekers. So the Underground Railroad was a system of um, help that was given to freedom seekers as they passed from states that practiced slavery into free states and ultimately to Canada. Now the Underground Railroad passed through Illinois and you might be thinking that as a free state, Illinois might have been a logical stopping place for formerly enslaved persons to settle. Unfortunately, Illinois before the Civil War had a series of restrictive laws called Black Codes, which severely limited the rights and freedoms of black Americans in our state. And so most enslaved people found um, it made more sense to head for Chicago where they could maybe take a boat to the Great Lakes to Canada. So Canada was their ultimate destination. So freedom seekers were assisted on the Underground Railroad and that assistance took the form of perhaps providing food, perhaps providing shelter, perhaps um, hiding someone from people who were out to catch enslaved people. And so this is what uh, John and Mary did. So being a helper on the Underground Railroad was perilous not just for the freedom seeker but also for the people providing assistance. And this was in large part because in 1850 the United States passed the uh, Fugitive Slave Act. And this is an act that required enslaved people to be returned to their owners even if they were found in a free state. It also imposed heavy penalties and even jail time on people who were convicted of assisting freedom seekers. And so with that background in place, I'm going to turn it over to Doug, and Doug is going to unpack what's going on at this moment in this painting. All right, thank you, Erica. So this is a painting by uh, Alfred Jackson Tyler, and it is titled uh, John Jones and His Wife Mary Aid Fugitives, painted in 1963. Now this painting was a commission for the 100th anniversary of the Emancipation Proclamation. So the Emancipation Proclamation was President Abraham Lincoln's declaration to end slavery in the states that succeeded from the Union during the Civil War. This exhibition was held in Chicago in 1963, and it featured artworks by black uh, artists who captured the important moments of black history. Tyler chose John and Mary Jones as his subject. Now a little bit about the artist first. Alfred Jackson Tyler was born in Chicago in 1933, and he studied at the School of the Art Institute, and he worked professionally as a graphic designer. His training oriented his artwork to these sort of bold graphic images and bright colors that you see here. He also came of age as an artist in the late 1950s and early 60s during the rise and height of the civil rights movement. Black artists and activists were looking to empower black lives, creating art, words, music, and culture that brought black history and experience center stage. 
Uh, Tyler wrote of his work, quote, my main purpose is to glorify African American people. My brushes will always impart a flare of color for my people. As my old art teacher used to say, use more color. Tyler created a cinematic scene where John and Mary Jones are aiding a man uh, in his journey to freedom by providing a safe haven for the night. The mood is uh, tense and dramatic. Uh, the moment is heightened by the single lantern that Mary holds, which just brightens the whole space. And John gestures to the hiding place where the man will find refuge. Mary is holding a rifle in a very, very tense grip. Now, this is a fictional moment drawn from real history. Likely, Mary would not have had a gun as the Black Codes in Illinois outlawed the ownership of firearms for black people. Still, we can sense the determination in John and Mary's face as all three of them look over their shoulder at the possibility of danger caused or brought about by those who are looking, by bounty hunters, who are bent on capturing and returning enslaved people on their journey to freedom for money. Tyler wanted to portray the danger and courage of those fighting for the end of slavery as an inspiration for the civil rights struggle of his day. Thank you so much, Doug and Erica, for spending that time with us and teaching us more about the Underground Railroad and the Fugitive Slave Act. I hope you all learned a lot, and thank you for joining us.